What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, P Money. So the Blazers get back in the winning column with the route of the Knicks over at the Motor Center. And they go 115-87. And in that first quarter, Dane was on fire. But in that first quarter, the Knicks, Julius Randle, had seven points on three of six from the field, goes one of two from three, and had a rebound. Mitchell Robinson off the bench chipped in with four points on one of two from the field, goes for three rebounds. But the Knicks as a whole, they only shoot 35% um, from the field and, ter and a terrible 20% from three-point land. Um, they pull down 13 boards, they get three assists, and they go three for six from the free throw line. And they end up scoring 22 points in that quarter. So it was pretty much the beginning of the end after the first quarter. For the Blazers, Dang goes for 17 points in the first quarter. On six of eight from the field, goes five of six from three-point land. He also had a rebound and a turnover. Um, Whiteside, he chipped in with six points on three of five from the field. Goes for an assist, and he had three blocks. The Blazers, they shoot 55% from the field and 50% from three-point land in that first quarter. They also pull down 13 rebounds. They have five assists. And the Blazers scored 20 or 32 in that quarter, and they're up 10 after one. In the second quarter, it was pretty much more of the same for the, for the Knicks. Um, Julius Randle finished the half with nine points on three of seven from the field. He goes one of three from three. He had two rebounds, two assists, two turnovers, and a steal. And then Mitchell Robinson, he had six points on two of three from the field, and he had three rebounds. Also, R.J. Barrett had five points on one of six from the field. He goes all of one from three, and he pulled down four rebounds. The Knicks, as a whole, they shoot 34% from the field, <laughs> and their three-point percentage goes down to 13%. They have eight, eight assists, 24 rebounds, um, and they only scored 19 points in that second quarter. And they also had seven to 10 from the free throw line. For the Blazers, Dame just kept cooking. Dame had 25 on seven of 11 from the field. He goes six of eight from three. And he had a rebound and two turnovers. Whiteside had a double-double in the first half. He went for 12 points on five of eight from the field, pulled down 11 rebounds, had four blocks and an assist. And Anthony Simons off the bench. He had 11 points on four or five from the field, goes three or four from three, and he grabbed three rebounds. Both CJ and Melo in that first half were way off. And CJ pretty much stayed cold all game, while Melo picked it up later in the, in the second half. But uh, CJ was at six points on two of nine from the field, 0 of six from three. He had two turnovers and a block. And then Melo had four points on one of six from the field, goes all of one from three, had two rebounds, three turnovers, and two steals and a block. Um, the Blazers cool down a bit. They go 42% from the field, 38% from three. They have six assists. They pull down 30 rebounds, and they go 13 to 15 from the free throw line. Um, they also employed a lineup that I actually liked a lot. They put Scal and Whiteside together in that second quarter, kind of probably about, I would say about five minutes left. And they were just cleaning up the boards a lot because the Knicks are actually one of the better, actually they are the best rebounding, offensive rebounding team in the league. And that makes sense since they only make 40% of their baskets. So, so it's, <laughs> it's only right that they get a stat that's kind of in their favor. But, um, yeah, that, that lineup was, was nice. It was uh, Dame, CJ, Baysmore, Scal, 
and then um, Bright Side. And Melo got to sit, his normal rest. And I just like that lineup. It's especially like for a team like the Nuggets that we got coming up. Because they got a lot of guys sort of. Like they got Jokic and Plumlee. And then they got um, Hernan Gomez. They got a lot of Jeremy Grant. So they got a lot of different matchups that they could go, that they could do against the Blazers whenever we play them. So I like that lineup. And we might have to use that again in, the, in that Nuggets game coming up. Um, in that third quarter, Randall kind of got it going a little bit. He scored 15 points on six of 11 from the field. It was one of four from three. Had seven rebounds, four assists, two turnovers and a steal. And then Morris, he kind of picked it up. He had 10 points on four of 11 from the field. It was one of six from three. Had three rebounds and three turnovers. Um, their field goal percentage was 31%. They had 14% from three-point land. <laughs> um, they had 10 assists, 38 rebounds, and they went 11 of 18 from the field, or from the free throw line. And then Dame pretty much finished out his, his game with 31 points on nine of 15 from the field. It was eight of 12 from three. Had two rebounds, six assists, and three turnovers. Whiteside also pretty much finished up his night he scored 17 points on seven of 11 from the field. Grabs 15 rebounds, had two assists. One of the assists was like a nice little back shoulder pass to Melo for a finish. And that was, that was a nice, excellent pass from, from Whiteside. And his, he's got some passing skills for sure. And then he also had a turnover and he finished up with five blocks on the night. Um, Anthony Simons, in that third quarter, he went for 14 points on five of seven from the field. Goes four of six from three, had three rebounds. And the Blazers were up 86 to 59 in the, after the third quarter. Um, the Knicks pretty much put the bench in after that because Julius Randle ended up being a, the leading point man with 15 points. Um, Mitchell Robinson, he had 14 points on five of eight from the field. And he had four or five rebounds, a turnover, and a steal. Um, Trier, he came in off the bench and he scored 13 on four of nine from the field. Goes two of five from three. Had three assists and a turnover um, for the game. They finished up 35% from the field, 18% from three. Uh, they pulled down. 47 rebounds for the Blazers. Like I said, um, Melo and CJ kind of got it going a little bit in that, like later on in the half. But uh, Melo ended up finishing with 16 points on five of 13 from the field. He goes three or four from three, had two assists. Or, no, he had four rebounds, three turnovers two steals in the block. And then CJ, he ended up finishing with 13 points. And I think he was four of 13 from the field, I think it was. And he had like two rebounds, three turnovers, and a block. Um, and then Simons finished up with 16 points on five of nine from the field, four of seven from three, five rebounds and three assists. Oh yeah. CJ went five of 14 from the field, one of eight from three, had four rebounds, three turnovers, two steals and a block. So that was his numbers and stat line. The team stats for the Knicks, they go 32 of 91 for 35% from the field, seven of 38 for 18% from three point land. They go 16 of 26 for 62% from three, or from free throw line. Um, they get 16 assists of their 32 made baskets. They pull down 47 rebounds, 11 offensive. They get five steals, three blocks, and have 11 turnovers. For the Blazers, they go 39 of 90 for 43% from the field. They go 
17 of 41 for 42 percent from three-point land they go 20 of 24 for 80 83 percent from three-point land of their 39 made baskets they get 20 assists um, they pull down 58 rebounds 11 offensive they get six steals seven blocks and they have 12 turnovers so both teams pretty much relatively took care of the ball pretty well um, next up for the Blazers is the Nuggets like I was saying earlier in the end of this and that's on Thursday night so I'm definitely looking forward to that game Nuggets haven't been playing super well lately I've been noticing that Jokic kind of hasn't been I mean he's he picked it up offensively a little bit but he's kind of regressed this year so far he's back to towards his uh career averages of uh I think he's at 16.2 and his career average is 16.1 and like 10 10 rebounds so and he's also shooting like 46 percent from the field where he's usually in 50 percent range so I think those rumors about him kind of being out of shape are actually true because he's not looked the same, like the same player at all this year. And it's pretty crazy to see, but if he can, he can play bad against us. I also saw that Jamal Murray ended up only playing five minutes because of, uh, they call it a trunk contusion. <laughs> But uh, I guess he hurt himself. I don't know if he fell wrong or something. And I don't know how long he's going to be out. I didn't see any, anything regarding him not playing for the Blazers. He's a tough young guy, so I'm sure he'll, he'll be out there. And we definitely got to watch him. And yeah, man, Blazers get back to their winning ways. Needed this dub big time. Couldn't take a loss to the, to the Knicks with the way they've been playing lately. I mean, I know they have been competitive with other teams, but I'm just glad that the Blazers took care of business like they did tonight, because, or last night, because this is a one of those confidence building type wins, you know? It's the type of win that you need to feel good about yourselves, you know what I mean? Like, there was a lot of frustration building with the losing. You could just see it on everyone's face. Like the last game, um, a lot, the, book, the ball movement was a lot better. The energy was higher. And you could just tell they weren't flat like they were in that game against OKC. And I think that injury to Rodney Hood really took a toll on the whole team. And there's no excuses. They still took the loss, but it was definitely tough to, to watch that game for the Blazers because they just weren't very consistent at all in a losing effort. But, um, yeah. got the Nuggets on Thursday. The Knicks go to Golden State tomorrow, so they got a back-to-back. -back. And both of those teams are two, the two worst teams in the NBA, so we'll see which team is the worst team tomorrow again or tonight or today actually so we'll see who is the worst team in the league is it the Knicks or is it Golden State and that's so crazy to see that Golden State represented the West in the finals last year and they only have five wins this year that's insane to me I know they got injuries and all that but man it's just crazy to see how far how far they have fallen. And even with those guys back, coming back, it's gonna be interesting for them, man. It's gonna be very interesting for them. I saw a rumor that uh, Golden State might trade Draymond Green to Portland, and I don't want no parts of no Draymond Green, man. I don't even know who started that rumor, and I don't like it at all. <laughs> Portland is definitely not going to take no Draymond Green right now. He makes too much money and he doesn't produce enough. Draymond Green is <laughs> a little bit better than 
a guy like Anthony Tolliver, who's on a minimum contract. So, no, absolutely not. Golden State got a bad bill of goods on that one. So, Golden State gonna have to deal with that. I don't think anybody's gonna take Draymond Green off their hands. Uh, maybe over KC, maybe. But I don't think they would do that either. Because I did see an article where OKC is willing to take bad contracts for uh, if they get their guys out of there. So I don't know if they want to. I mean, right now they're in the seventh seed. So if I was them, I would just keep going and seeing where it takes me. But it looks like they're kind of adamant on getting guys out of there, from at least the article that I saw. So we'll see what happens this trade deadline comes up in February. Um, I seen someone in tickets chat was saying that Nurk is coming back in two weeks and I haven't seen anything about that at all. I've seen him practicing with the team a few times, but I haven't got I haven't seen anything that's concrete about him being back and so so soon. I remember but like I said it's been so vague as far as like injury updates and whatnot for him so it's possible because like I was saying in a previous video that they've been all over the place as far as when he's coming back so he could be he could be ready it would be nice man to see where he's at see what he can bring to the table bring him in slowly you know if he is healthy enough to be on the floor that would be great it's just another, like, with White Side playing so well right now, we can have him come off the bench, play about 15, 18 minutes, if that, you know. Have him play right with um, Scal, you know. Have him, have Scal play that forward, the backup forward. And it's a nice, I mean, it's very great if that's, if that's possible. If he is back and he's healthy, that means that the Blazers can go ahead and make some trades. Like, that will involve Whiteside or Baysmore. And get some guys that they, that they need if they're trying to contend for a championship. But this is your boy P Money. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. Shouts out to the entire LDBC. Shouts out to all my supporters. I appreciate each and every one of y'all.